Welcome to the podcast where relationships, confidence, and determination all converge into an amazing heartfelt experience. This is Speaking from the Heart. Welcome back to episode number 109 of Speaking from the Heart. And today, we're going to go back to a concept that we talked all the way back in episode number three, in which we're going to now examine it in the sense of our businesses and how we can succeed in any type of climate. Now, before you even say anything about the fact that this episode seems to be a little caveat to the fact that we're going through quite an economic hardship all across the world, especially here in the United States when it comes to even struggling to survive, whether it's for your business or individually, I want you to understand that it's not just about what the short term is, it's about the long term. And the long term is really what's more important than anything else especially if we're going to be able to work on ourselves. That's why I even stress in my business, Your Speaking Voice LLC, about understanding what the long-term implications or the goals that you set are in order to be able to understand and adapt to all the different types of competition that exist. And even with all that said, I know that for many coaches, Goals are just an amazing thing to work on, and I'm a little bit cliche when it comes to understanding that goals might not always be the best way in which we can move forward, but understand for a moment that goals are really the underpinning to the bigger expansions of time and space that we can ultimately achieve, whether it's through the things that we want to achieve economically, whether we want to achieve physical assets or even other opportunities, It's about living in the moment of a mindset of understanding how you can run yourself into a great opportunity. Although today I'm going to focus more on my business, folks, for those that are not in business, keep in mind that maybe these attitudes, these different perceptions that we're going to discuss might be related to even you personally, for that matter. Now, there's a variety of different strategies out there that have existed for more than half a century to over a century. Let's face it, businesses have existed for a very, very long time, even dating back to the early era of humans, human civilization for that matter. And even when we think about the fact that we have to be able to overcome some of the struggles that we're existing right now, whether we're trying to feed ourselves, whether we're trying to clothe ourselves, whatever that circumstance is, we are ultimately looking at the fact that we need to have these gains in order to keep evolving. That's why we have things like the New York Stock Exchange, having the things in which we can trade for commodities and different values of stock in order to grow our portfolio. If you think about it, we each have our own portfolio of different types of growth that we want to have, whether we want to work on a new skill, a new ability, or have the thirst for knowledge of learning from something in the past, present, or even future. Having the things that we have available to us in our portfolio allow us to succeed in the long run. We often look at this in the business world as our business plan. Where are we going to segment our business in order for us to grow, and what backs us up? What really makes us qualified to do it? But more importantly, how are we going to continue to be qualified to be able to help others? It's really about not only the short-term goals that we're trying to achieve, but it's about how we can plan for the future. What is our long-term strategy in order to achieve what we ultimately are setting out for? That's why the mission or even the vision or even the values of our businesses make such a big difference. A lot of times, even for businesses for that matter, having the right strategy in which you're communicating those to your stakeholders or even the people of interest that want to be part of your business oftentimes means examining what is truly important for you to grow, to be able to understand that maybe those things that you're doing today aren't necessarily going to work in the future. So when we look at what we have to do, we also have to look at what that means when we do those chess pieces on the chess board. Now, a couple things to think about when you're strategizing. A coach can always make such a big difference in doing that. And I will always, always, always recommend that if you have a certain stage of your business that you're working at, whether you're a small business turning into a medium-sized business or even a medium-sized business turning into a large business or a large business becoming an enterprise, regardless of what it is, 
get the right person that will help you align with your values. And when I say person in this context, I don't necessarily mean hiring the one individual that will help you take it there. It could be a number of different people. It could be even a huge entity of itself. Working across all kinds of different spectrums, accounting, legal, procurement, wherever those sections are, that will allow you to be able to run your business into that new frontier. Even when you have all those aspects considered, the universal thing that you have to think about is all these different ideologies that we all have that we need to embrace. Change can be difficult. What was a very small business now turning into something that you did not see before can be very depressing. It might not have been what you exactly wanted. And yet trying to be able to engage and create that value for everybody else means that you have to examine a little bit more of what's involved with not only understanding what's important for those people that are working with you to be aligned with, but also understanding that the strategies that they are employing also have to align with what you expect. So having the right expectation model will allow you to be able to grow into those new heights. And that is something that is really important and most people don't understand. They feel that they take the advice of somebody that is helping you, but yet you're thinking that maybe this isn't exactly the way to go. And before it's too late, you could say something, but you don't. Therefore, you're walking yourself into a disaster. And trust me, have I only seen so many disasters when I've been working not only for government, but also have seen personally with many of my friends and family that have engaged themselves into this communication plateau. They are not working on not only understanding what they're getting themselves into, but also asking the right questions. And you have to ask the right questions if you're ever going to be able to achieve success. So first strategy, work on somebody or a group of people that will help you get to where you need to be. The other thing that you have to think about when it comes to even understanding how to run your business is to know what you're doing now and whether you're really good at it or not. In other words, what is your branding on par? And it's so sad sometimes that I see businesses open. They have no image or no soul for that matter. And it's only a matter of time in which they close up. Some of the most successful businesses that have even been challenged by the COVID-19 pandemic and been able to make it to the other side have not only understood what their brand destination is, but they've also been able to create that value within their clients, within the customers that they serve, all kinds of different segments of the population in order for them to have that consistency, to have brand loyalty, which is usually the ultimate goal of being able to do anything that you want to set out to achieve. Having that goal, having that opportunity in mind, allows us to grow into a variety of different areas. And even one of my clients right now is exploring that opportunity of a lifetime, being able to share not only the things that they're doing really good with right now, but experimenting in some other areas that will allow them to expand beyond what they ultimately never thought possible. But when you think about this universal concept of understanding what things are, going back to our last conversation piece, it's about understanding how you can use that to your advantage. If you don't have the right idea or the right people behind you and they're misrepresenting the brand that you're creating, then how is this all going to work? How are you ever going to be able to achieve the best version of yourself, especially in the business world? Understand not only your competition, which we talked about literally in episode 107, but we're talking about now what's really more important than anything else what you want to represent. Oh, yes. If those two strategies don't resonate with you, let's talk about the very last one, the most important of them all. If I were to put this on a pedestal of being that it's number one, I would do so. And get ready. You ready for it? This is what it's all about. What I've been waiting to share with you this whole entire episode, it is, if you're ever going to work on your business and your climate, having the right relationship. That's right. Your relationships with everyone else are really what ultimately drive you to success in any type of climate. I often think of times in my life personally where I have let so many people down to the point that they walked away from me. 
And even now, I know that there are things that I do wrong because I'm not perfect. And I don't ever claim to be perfect, nor if the day that I do become perfect, even in episode 502, I hope that I am corrected because I am not that perfect person. And I hope that episode 109 will be shown to me again because maybe I will long forget that I recorded this. But that's what I want you to remember, to not be forgotten. Because when you are forgotten with that relationship that you have with somebody else, it will never work. Whatever idea that you have that is great in mind will never be able to succeed. In other words, if you do not take care of your people, if you do not take care of the relationships that you have with your bookkeeper, your social media person, regardless of who it is, your partner in crime when doing your business for that matter, even your own loving wife or husband, this will never work for you. You will never have a successful business. Because if you think about it, your business depends on everybody else's business helping you. You have to identify what is the most important thing that you can provide to so many people across this planet. Whether it's in a small geographical area or in a big wide expanse. Because all the way back in episode number three, which if you thought I would forget, I did not. We talked about what it meant to create the best relationships for your well-being. And in that episode, not only did we discuss the importance of why those relationships are really helpful, especially when we're building our business or building ourselves, but it's not just about giving and taking. It's about the foundation that we create with our ability to not only create comfort, but to be able to interact. Because the famous Aristotle would even say, and have I even quoted on this very podcast, his importance about us being political animals, political being social in his time. Friends, if you haven't thought about it yet, there's really a lot of connections. There are a lot of things that we're able to do, and whether we are working with someone individually or a big company to help build our businesses, whether we have the right branding, it all doesn't give a crap or even hold a candle to the fact that if we don't have the right people that we're having a relationship with that is positive in nature, forget it. You might as well walk away. Get your money back. Take your losses. Whatever you have now, don't dig any deeper. If you look at some of the most successful companies, whether they're Apple or even Toyota, they thought about the long game. And even then, Apple in itself might not have been always the most revolutionary company. They stayed stagnant for many years before that, before they realized that maybe they needed to be a little bit more of a risky adventure. Who would have ever thought that we would be walking around with iPhones, even smartphones for that matter, that allow them to be our personal assistants. Who would have ever thought that even some of the things that we take advantage of today were thought about in the 1950s and 60s and some of the most famous shows that talked about space, exploration, the opportunity to see new frontiers. Regardless of what it is, all of those built on one vast big concept, relationships today, I want you to revisit some of those relationships that you've had. Did they really end on a good note? And if they didn't end on a good note, why? Can you fix it? Is there something that you can do to change the status quo of what's ahead? Can you really help yourself to be able to stay consistent, to be on that same plateau? Or maybe get off that plateau once and for all and be able to shoot for the space to shoot into space, for that matter, of all the things that you have available. Because let's face it, as much as I want you to be successful in the things that you're doing, not only from an accounting, a procurement, from a legal, from all the other social media perspectives, those are all great things. But you need to have the best relationships with people if you're ever going to be able to get not just the short-term gains, but the long-term gains as well. Let's ask the question, are you really trying your very hardest to build those relationships? 
And I don't necessarily mean always going to the networking events at your local chamber. I'm not even talking about the vendor events in which you set up a table, interact with your local community. I'm talking about meaningful one-on-one conversations where you might not even get paid a dime, but you're there to listen because those are the people that will remember you and they're going to help you run your business regardless of any type of climate that you're existing in. You have to strategize to be able to even do that. So set up your communication plan. Think about what you'll do in the next 30 days. Will you be able to talk to 10 people? Maybe even five. Hey, if you're even afraid of doing five or 10, can you talk to just one person? One person that will help you to see that overall difference in your life. Instead of just worrying about the next dollar that you're making, maybe you should start worrying about the next friendship, the next relationship in your business that will help you to create that best value. Let's face it. The voice that we have in this ever-changing world will continue to change. But the one thing that doesn't have to change are the people that we associate with, unless they're really bad for us, which that's a whole other discussion for another episode. It's about understanding who we can connect with. If you can connect with someone today that can help you move yourself forward, regardless of whether that is for a business, whether that is for your personal development, whether it's even for your professional development, maybe you can help yourself create that opportunity of a lifetime. Instead of just worrying about what is going to happen the next 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days, maybe you can worry about what's going to happen the next 10, 20, 30 years. Or if you don't have that much time left on this earth, which I think you will anyway, I think that you've got a lot of inspiration to offer, even if it's the next one to five years. So start thinking about what your long-term plan is. But think about what your relationships are. Because your relationships are worth so much more in gold or any sort of monetary value for that matter. And maybe, if you think about it, Those relationships, they'll be there regardless of how much you have to pay. Maybe you don't have to pay one cent for the people that will want to help you. And that can be the most rewarding thing in any type of climate. Thanks for listening to episode number 109 of Speaking from the Heart. And I look forward to hearing from your heart very soon. Thanks for listening. For more information about our podcast and future shows, search for Speaking from the Heart to subscribe and be notified wherever you listen to your podcasts. Visit us at www.yourspeakingvoice.biz for more information about potential services that can help you create the best version of yourself. See you next time.